Welcome, welcome, welcome. Everyone, come on in for just a little bit. It's time for three guys before the game. We didn't realize it. We don't see each other before we come down in the studio, but it's a blue day. Not blue in the sense of sadness, but blue in the sense that everyone wore a blue shirt. I don't even know if that's our team color. Do we have any team colors? No. I, this is... I mean, mine is... Yours is like North Carolina, and Brad's is like uh, Tulane or something. And <laughs> he went to went Tulane. Gave a Tulane. He gave a Tulane on you. Mine is uh, yeah. Kansas but State or something. It's kind, of, it's kind of a mix of things, and that's what this edition is. I'll this say. episode, it's a smorgasbord. This is the spring smorgasbord edition of the three guys before the game. It's episode number five hundred and forty-six, and it is brought to you, yes, to you. By the great folks at Comax Business Systems. They keep West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient. And they've been doing it for 25 years. The premier business systems company in our state. We'll tell you a little bit more later on. Three guys brought to us by GoMart. Go for good times. Go for GoMart. Well, they got that new app out. That's the way to go. You can roll up rewards points and then instantly save money on food and fuel. Three guys also brought to us by Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. They have their largest selection of boats and accessories of the entire year right now inside their facility in St. Albans. We'll show you a little bit of that later on. Or for those of you that are listening, we'll bring word pictures to your mind to explain it. Visit Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans and LouWendellMarineSales.com. Oh, what a weekend. What a weekend for the baseballers. Huh. They got a little something-something going on over there. Rolling. They got a little something-something going on over there, so... They, what they are is they're Friday night thieves. That's what they are. I mean, they have now just completed their second consecutive Big 12 sweep. And two weeks ago, went into Kansas, laughed at Dorothy, pushed Toto aside, punched the Tin Man right in the face, kicked the lion right in the seat of his pants. Scarecrow, he ran like hell. <laughs> he ran. So they rallied, if you'll remember, against Kansas on Friday night. J.J. Weatherhold had a big one. And they win that game Friday, and then they complete the sweep over Kansas. That brings us to this weekend. And on Friday night, Mother Nature, can we say, was not cooperative with the, uh, with the uh, folks that tried to attend the game. And it was just one of those games where it was raw and wet and windy. And bless the hearts of every single person that stayed for the entirety of that game. And they rallied again to win. And you get the win on Friday. Saturday, it was one of those days that you stopped. If you took two steps back and just analyzed everything inside that stadium on Saturday, it was the fruition of a dream. Now, I'm not going to get all field of dreams on you in Iowa cornfields. However, you had that moment when you looked around on Saturday. The weather's perfect. A little breezy out there to the left. A little breezy. But you're sitting on that site, and you think back to the days of Hawley Field, where Texas, when they first came, wouldn't get off the bus. They just, like, go take their bat, like, no dugout. Like, it was just it was not good. And then you walk around, there's 4,000 plus people in there. The weather's perfect. It's a difficult place to play. And West Virginia, again, just gets fantastic pitching. Fantastic pitching again. Another complete game. Second game in a row that he gets the start and goes 123 pitches on the nose. Mm -hmm. 123 against Kansas, 123. Complete game victory. And West Virginia, again, rallies. That's Derek Clark you're talking about. Yeah, Yeah. D.C., D.C., yeah, Derek Clark. And Jay, you got everything you wanted. J.J. Weatherhold comes to the plate, absolutely destroyed a baseball, made made a baseball unusable. 
hit a 405 feet, went off of like, I think it left like off of his bat like 692 miles an hour, or maybe off a mile or two. Are you getting a phone call? We interrupting you? Oh, you think I should take that? Uh, yeah. yeah, probably not. Uh, call him right back. Uh, yeah. Anyway, he's coming to Charleston next week. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Who was it? Coach Beeline. Wow, you just like I ghosted him. Coach Beeline? Well, I mean, bigger things, Hoppy. I'm talking with you. I'm talking Whoa. with the people. But he's going to be in Charleston next week for oh, the Mountaineer yes. Scholarship Dinner. Really? Yeah. And uh, he's looking forward to that. So, yeah, Coach Beeline will be. Anyway, so it was just pristine. It was perfect. West Virginia rallies. It was a fantastic day. Two for two and come behind victories. Two for two. They were down that game, too. Then yesterday, yesterday, I didn't make it over. I was mowing the lawn. But I had the game on my headphones. And it didn't look promising at the start. Right. Right? Did Don't not look nothing. promising. Yeah, they just – if it wasn't, wasn't good early. And it was one of those days, it's Sunday baseball, man, in college. Like, you might use a few pitchers. And West Virginia ended up using eight. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used up eight. But, again, it was movie-like. West Virginia rallies, tie the game up in the ninth. They send it to extra innings. Can't get – had runners on board in the tenth. Couldn't get them across. Goes to the eleventh. West Virginia got unbelievable – unbelievable relief pitching and Gavin Van Campen Gam- yeah. three and two three thirds and, three and two thirds scoreless in relief hoppy shut down eight in a row at one point incredible so he did his deal and then the bats came up and it was storybook right Chumley comes up to the bat gets it and absolutely dusts one jet jet streamed one out of the ballpark <laughs> he jet streamed one and the Mountaineers, world champion Mountaineers, complete a sweep. And now that's seven in a row in the league, right? Because they had won the last game against Okie State, if I'm not mistaken. Seven in a row in the league, they're in first place. Hello to your swan song, Randy Mazie. So far, so good. Now, obviously, still a ton to go. But you get these ones in your pocket as quickly as you can, and you can never take them off. That puts them right on the verge. I, I'll, they should get some votes this week to being ranked. That's a top 25 win over UCF. Three come from behind victories. Down four runs two different times in the game yesterday, Hop, including after the, the top of the first. But if you were watching that game, you could, you could tell, okay, you're down by four here. Just, just hang tight. That wind was blowing hard to left. So that's one of those games. Yeah, Sunday, you may not have your full staff, although West Virginia was in great shape because of Clark's complete yeah. game. But you're going to get wind gusting like that. You're going to have to mix some guys in. Mm-hmm. The batting was unbelievable. Chumley was great. Came back to hit that walk-off after getting hit in the head. He got Dude, that was scary. Yeah, it was. Bounces right back next to that bat. Goes uh-huh. yard. He got it. I mean, when I, when you looked at it, it almost looked like he t- if he didn't have that protector on in front of him, yep. right? That's exactly. I mean, that would have drilled him in the face. Still got a little nose, I think, on him. And he left the game at that point for concussion check and was able to re-enter. He was because which was good because you're basically out of players. Randy was right. using that whole roster there to get in. Yeah. Here, here's the other shout out too. Kyle West continues to just mash. What about the story that is? The kid from Charleston, Hoppy. Came well, up Musselman. From Charleston. Let's we, well, University, University of, Charles, of Charleston. Musselman. And just is absolutely crushing the ball. What is that? Five in his last seven games, eight home runs overall. He hits some seeds. All those dudes. That's a mm-hmm. that's a that's a team you can love. One of the best sports movies of all time is Bull Durham. <laughs> it is. And Crash, right up there with Gone with the Wind. Uh, Crash. Well, sports movies. I said. Oh. And Crash Davis says a player on a streak has to respect the streak, and then he goes on to talk about some other things as to whatever you're doing. So whatever whatever underwear they're wearing and not changing, whatever yeah. pregame meal they're having, yeah, whatever Brad, you as a baseball player probably had some idiosyncrasies, probably. <laughs> if there's one group you don't have to talk to yeah. about idiosyncrasies and yeah. superstition, it's the baseball guys. So whatever you're doing, because they're on a heater, they're on a heater, and not just, not just winning games like seven in a row and now tied for first place with Oklahoma. But the way they are doing it, as you guys talked about, coming from behind, down four, come back, down four, come back, game-winning home run by Chumley, you know, a walk-off. I mean, that, that kind of stuff is just you're on a roll. And the advantage of that is not only are you in first place and having this run right now, but what, Brad, you believe. Confidence. You believe. Down four, okay. So that confidence builder that's going on. Yeah. 
and, and to a season that that started out kind of shaky. Of oh, course, they yeah. had injuries and twenty stuff plus. Like that. Yeah, twenty plus games. You don't have. Guys. You don't have. But now they got guys, and now they're now they're on a roll, man. You get you get Hussey back, you get Weatherholt back, you get Save back. That makes a makes a little bit of a difference to your lineup from where it was early. Friend of the podcast, JJ Weatherholt, he got a little pissed, man. When he got hit that second time, 94 well, he miles. I, well, I get it. He should. Three 94 hit, miles. Three hit by pitches in the series? Yeah, 94 miles per hour right in the back. We should do that with you, Hop. Just, I mean, because a lot of times you, you want to get the feel like you wanted to go out there, you know, try to catch a punt or something like that. How about a 94 mile an hour right in your back? I would rather try to catch a punt than take a 94 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. Especially there. Yeah. Not a lot of padding there. Or, Not, or in, uh, you know what? Anywhere. I don't, I don't want to take a 94 mile an hour fastball. Yeah. You know what? Well, I was going to migrate into something else, but that, that, you know, all these major league pitchers now are getting injured because everybody's throwing 100 miles an hour all the time. And they have to pitch it in nine seconds. That's the complaint. That, well, the that's, clock. That, I, I don't Senator, think are you a, buying into that? I don't no. think it's a pitch clock. You don't buy into it. No, I think guys are throwing more pitches at a younger age. I think they're throwing more, more curveballs at a younger age, more stress on the arm. And I think that the, the arm's not meant to throw. 101, 102. That used to be unusual if a guy was touching 98, 99. Hoppy's right. Now it's it's regular guys are, and it's happening earlier in games too. That's one thing, yep. a study I was just reading about. Those those high-velocity pitches are starting earlier in a game where guys aren't as greased up with it. So, no, probably not And also, and everybody, they're pushing them for, and I don't know this much about it. I just read about it because I was interested in it. They're pushing for more spin on the ball. You know, all these things they're trying to do. And you just, you're not, physiologically, you're not built to do that. And what there was a major league team I read about the other day. All five starters throw it over 100 miles an hour. Yeah, I mean, that's not, starters. It used to just be the guy yeah, out of the bullpen that yeah. would, would touch that. Or one starter, maybe. then a guy in the bullpen would come in yeah, and throw was, and throw yeah. against three guys 100 miles an Rare hour. Rare to get a starter. Nolan Ryan would could get up there. J.R. Yeah. Richard. Good J.R. Richard reference. <laughs> you, you didn't bring, get, you didn't get a lot of them. Well, when, when Chapman came in, it was a big deal because he threw it 100 mile an hour plus. Right now, ev now everybody e throws. Everybody. Yeah. I didn't mean to digress. Well, no, but I mean, biomechanically, let's face it, the reality of it is this. Throwing a baseball at 100-plus miles per hour, this wasn't made to do that. You're, I, on a you you're, you're on a limited pitch count as a pitcher. You and just know it. And just you're talking about I wouldn't stand I wouldn't stand in there. I mean, I'm not. Well, it's all right. right. You wouldn't see it coming. I, you're right. I wouldn't see it. <laughs> you wouldn't see it. It wouldn't matter. I wouldn't see it. I might not be in the dugout. So everyone left. Everyone left the stadium yesterday. Over three thousand on hand. They left happy, including the dogs. It was bark in the park, yeah. and there was a lot of canines out there. And so even the dogs went home happy. And uh, that's a good day. That's a good day. So tomorrow we record Monday, the fifteenth of April. Tomorrow they got the Pitt Panthers here, yeah. and they'll try to keep uh, try to keep their winning ways going. That's always a good one too. And this weekend yeah, they've been they, impressive. This weekend. <laughs> It gets real, real. You got to go to Lubbock, play them Texas Techers. You got to play them uh, all. Good. Bring, play. bring it on. Go play. Uh, and that's you're a great, hot. that's a good atmosphere as well. Yeah, absolutely. I'm not saying. I'm just going to say it. You want to play them, play them when you're hot. <laughs> well, here, yeah. Okay. I'm with you. So that's what we have there. Congratulations to those dudes. And it's, it, baseball has that streak mentality more than a lot of other sports. Yes. Right? Yes. Next up, Mountaineer basketball. Everyone was getting a little concerned. Hey, what's going on? What's up with the staff? What's going on with, with, with all players? We got kids. So the overall thing was um, assistant coaches. Nothing, as we record, has been officially announced, but the pieces are coming together. And, uh, you know, from what I understand, uh, coaches in this weekend, shopping around for homes, you know, Hoppy, home, little home research, things like that. So it's all – it's all coming together. And in addition, what are you saying? Yeah. I mean, are you going to drop some names? Or are you just going to say, oh, no, people are in town shopping? I mean, that, that's no, pretty I mean, vague. No, it's, it's pretty much a foregone, foregone conclusion that West Virginia is ready to, or they're going to announce here, I would imagine, shortly, Nelson Hernandez as the general manager of the Mountaineer okay. Basketball Club. And he's got a pretty interesting background. And comes after just one season at Oklahoma State. Ooh. So he would be the guy that would be overseeing, you know, player personnel, portal, recruiting in the sense that, okay, what do we need? What Salary do we got? How, 
I don't know if you'd say that. He would be aware of it. He'd be aware. Yeah. <laughs> he I mean, there's be... not a cap, so you don't have to say <laughs> cap, but oversee the salary structure. All right. I mean, there's yeah. a cap in that you only have so much money. That's a no. natural cap. No, I understand. I understand. And uh, also looks as though Senator... But there's no luxury tax when you go over an <laughs> arbitrary number that's put in place. So it's... <laughs> Talk to a guy this weekend in the basketball world that had talked to someone who had attended uh, Rick Pitino's press conference down at the Ar- Arkansas last week. And he said they got $5 million for their NIL. And one of the thoughts was, pay 10 dudes, 5... No, you, you don't mean... You mean Cal Perry. Cal Perry. What did I say? I'm sorry. You said Rick Pitino. Oh, geez. Uh, wrong wrong guy. Same vowel at the end of the name. Yeah. Uh, or vowel at the end of the name. Uh, 5 hundy for 10 dudes. He was going to try... They were thinking about going 5 hundy for 10 dudes and make them play together. Yeah. I mean... Yeah. The, the, the rates continue to go up. Some have said that that fund may climb to as much as $7 million. So rate continues to go up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of press conferences, I got to give Kentucky a lot of credit. Did that you was watch nice. that Mark Pope press conference? That was nice. That's a couple things. Hoppy, they sold it. We didn't sell oxygen. We're selling tickets. Arena was full capacity. Wow. So what is that? 20 some, 22, 23? A lot of people there. It, pretty, pretty damn full. It was a lot. I of mean, people. you can poo poo that if you want. Go watch the video. That's pretty damn full. And that's about as loud as you're going to hear a press conference. So he played on their 96 championship team. Mm-hmm. And when they won the 96 championship at the celebration, they, they rolled their charter bus right into Rupp Arena, <laughs> and they all came off and they did their celebration. They recreated that, pulled the bus in, had the 96 team get off to cheers. Pope's last off holding up the championship trophy. It was, it was tremendous. That's, That's well about as good of a press yeah. conference entrance as you'll ever see, I give them a ton of credit. It was loud. As there. you like to say, won the press they, conference. Uh, they won the press conference big time. He he was, I thought he was outstanding. Said a lot of really good he things. He was outstanding. Yeah, said a lot of really good things. That's a great hire. That's like, that is a great hire. I was impressed by those dudes when they came in with the BYUs. You hear anything on BYU? Uh, no, but I'm not, I haven't been looking. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Just to watch, just follow Samo on Twitter. Oh, you're not going after that one? You're not going to try to lock up with him on that one? I'm done. I'm done with all that. Excuse me? Over it. Really? Yeah. They have had a couple guys under the portal, though, as you would imagine. BYU. I'd take a couple of them dudes who can shoot that ball. Yeah, they were good. They were good. Who? Oh, well, okay. Uh, Senator looks as though we all may have an Illinois assistant joining the fold. Yeah, there's reports out there from the Illinois side of things. Chester Frazier, one of the assistants there at Illinois, Maybe on the move and maybe headed to West Virginia and potentially a report out this morning as we yeah. record this on Monday that may be bringing a, a kid from Illinois with him in huh. the transfer portal. How about that? Yeah. It's usually helpful. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah. We'll see how that goes. That's as a, we said last week. It's part at, of the dowry. That's the old school dowry, Hoppy. <laughs> you bring a little something. What else you bringing with you? Yeah. What are you bringing? Well, Hop, the reason we mentioned that last week, we just needed to, everybody needed to just calm down. There was a lot of angst. In Mountaineer land, that nothing was happening, no assistance, no players, nothing was going on, yeah, nothing yeah. was happening, nothing was. It'll be, it'll be all right. Saw Coach DeVries. Be all, be all right. Saw Coach DeVries at the ball game on Saturday. They had uh, three, well, they had four recruits in, including his son. So Tucker's already signed. So you had three others in addition. So they had three new guys potentially. Now they'll just, it's just going to be coming in there. Every time you look at a list of top transfers, Tucker DeVries is either one or two. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Good starting point, mm-hmm. right? Good starting point yeah. there. So that'll that'll develop more as this week goes on. You'll start to see more and more uh, pieces come together. Um, went over to the footballers, watched a little bit uh, earlier today. And um, this is the second to last week. They're going to go Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Next week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Spring game is a week from this coming Saturday. All seems to be going well on the Western Front. Had a couple of visitors. Uh, had a young man by the name of Zach Frazier and Doug Nestor. They were watching practice. Hmm. And uh, it was funny. There were some drills going on, and then they, they called everybody up, and they were getting ready to go a little 11 on 11. And Nestor looks at Frazier goes, come on, let's go down here. They're getting ready to play real football. Those linemen, they don't 
they don't like <laughs> they don't like the drills. Not big drill, not big drill guys. Like special teams bore them. Uh, they just they're just like, come on, let's go, let's go do a little bit of this. So uh, that's going on. That's going on. You know, we talk about one of the guys, and maybe we talked about this in the previous show, but I know that Metro News did a feature on him. Uh, but it's going to be good to have Trey Lathan back. You know, Brad, remember the year he was having? Freshman All-American type year. Before he got hurt mm-hmm. in that, I think, TCU game. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, and he had a ba- he had a bad break, so I hope he's going to be back in full force. But I mean, that he's back. He's out there practicing full force. He's a full go right now. That's that's a guy who was immediately making. I mean, that's a guy that stood out immediately. He was making an impact early. Now he's back. That's yeah. Great. And and we've said this a couple times. We'll dive more into it. I I'm excited to watch this linebacker position. You, know, you get him back. He's as you said was outstanding. Josiah Trotter's the guy you yeah. talked a lot about last year. Coaches are raving about him this spring. Ben Cutter's a Cutter's guy back. played I mean, all season, stepped into a starting role, and and you don't even really talk about him. We haven't said his name much this spring. Caden Beiser got significant yeah. snaps. Reed Carico comes in as a four star out of high school, transferred from Ohio State. You've got some depth for the first time at that linebacker position in a long time with some potentially a couple of really high end guys. And, and while you you really would not have wanted guys to get injured, but the fact that they were, and the cutter came in and played as much as he did. Yeah, really helped. Now, he comes in as a guy who knows. Yes, mm-hmm. absolutely right. Yeah, that position's going to be fun yeah, to should watch. should be strong. You know who's having a good spring? Pac-Man Fox. Mm-hmm. You would expect that, yeah, wouldn't you, from Pac- Pac-Man? Pac-Man Fox is playing playing really well. Doing really he made, well. He made a couple catches last year that were just freaks, like freak catches. Yeah. And one he got hurt on. Oh, <laughs> Right? He went up. Yeah. So that's those guys. He had a couple over the middle like that where he elevated. Yeah, he's got, yeah that receiver group's gonna gonna pop forth he's, too. He's and, got intestinal force. And in fact, actually punt return yardage. <laughs> I mean, I mean, we're not we're relatively not relatively new we're concept. Not, we're not, Is that what you're we're saying? We're not that far separated from don't put anyone back, <laughs> and that being the right decision. Yeah. If you remember when Dana did that in the game, that was actually the right decision, yeah. as bad as it had been. Yeah, Pac Man Fox has stabilized that. Yeah. Got a, little new, got a little new help in special teams. You got Chris Herring, former Mountaineer linebacker, oh, special he could, teams. Yeah. He is a consultant on special teams, so a new pair of eyes. He had been with uh, Paul Christ at, was, at Wisconsin for a number of years, uh, so it's good to see him back in the right colors, gold and blue. Um, the he right gold and blue. The right gold and blue because he was up there with Paul uh, when Paul was up the road at uh, Pitt for a little while. So everyone has to have you know, some form of cleansing. And obviously, uh, Chris has cleaned things up there, and so he's back. This defense overall has a chance, mm-hmm. right? If you get some – because think about that, what we just said, stabilize the middle of the field, Hoppy. And mm-hmm. then if you get some of these pass rushers that pan out, a TJ Jackson and a Ty French, two new guys, add in to Sean Martin, who's right. had a really good spring. So you got a chance to get a pass rush and a second line of defense, and then you mix in some of these incoming defensive backs. I, I think they've upgraded talent there significantly. This could be a fun unit to watch. And we're not we're not guilty of spring fever, are we? Spring fever, where you just get you know they're not no because because we're not over the top predicting a Big Twelve title here. We're just saying, uh, I mean, listen, the, go, the pieces look better. The take, pieces take look better. Take what promising. I just said about uh, linebackers. Go ahead and pick that apart if you can. You can't. Trotters looked great. You saw Latham was really good, and you got an experience in Ben Cutter. The other two, you'll see how they react. Mm-hmm. Right? Those linemen, T.J. Jackson and Ty French, have looked really good. They've got to translate up a level from Gardner Webb and from Troy, but they've shown flashes. Sean Martin, you've already seen make plays. It's just a matter of it, can he elevate his game up and make more and more consistently. And those defensive backs are getting the two guys from Northwestern in particular that have already played high level defense at a big time school. Aiden Garns is a question, right? They've loved him so far, the Duquesne corner that transferred in. And and Hop, what I'd say about him is you've you've seen this cornerback position at West Virginia under Neil take guys from a lower level and elevate up into turn into stars, mm-hmm. right? Alonzo Adai was one. Charles Woods was one. Have you heard of a guy named Beanie Bishop that came immediately from Minnesota, but before that had elevated right. himself up? So that's a blueprint that is worked. So you should be excited about Aiden Garns as well. Yeah. Uh, a couple of things to your point and your question. Are, are you caught in spring fever? Because spring fever, when August comes, then you get caught in August fever. And you sit here and you rave about, these guys and you rave about, well, this is going to be da, 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 da. Here's what I think is a fair statement to make because someone asked me that this weekend. They said, well, 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 here's what I think. 
we've reached the point, we've returned to the point in our football program that now, week in and week out, we will be extremely competitive to play at a very high level. Prior to this year, I think we were on a rebuild, rebuild, rebuild to try to get the balance back that this program had. Now, we're there. We can be competitive. We had to smoke and mirror a lot of things over the last several years at various positions, trying to make up for weaknesses. At least you've now filled the cupboard up, and now you got a chance. Now, how does that translate? The ball's weird. The ball's shaped weird. A tip, a fumble, a pick, a missed field goal, those are the things going to ultimately out-determine games. But you will not get outclassed or run off, which potentially could have happened in the last several years on a somewhat frequent basis. I, th- I think that's well said. I-, I would add to that that previously, and, and previous to last year, the margin was so narrow that y- it was very hard, if not impossible, to overcome a mistake or a couple of mistakes. Mm-hmm. And when you're a good team or a better team, you can make, you don't want to, but you can make a couple of mistakes, but Brad, you're good enough to to offset that. Correct. Right? Okay. Yeah, which I which I think is clear. You saw that from the offense last year. But here, here's the other thing, Hop, that I think keeps you out of the spring fever category for this particular year is a lot of these guys we're referring to, you've seen perform. Mm-hmm. Right. I mean, I don't have to f- to sell hope with quarterback Garrett Green, do I? Right. Right. How about the running back room? Does that seem pretty solid? How about the receiver room? You saw them produce at a freshman level the expectation that they move forward. That's a reasonable expectation. And, and even offensive line, that to me, I don't know that there's a ton of question marks on this team. Offensive line is because you can't lose one of the greatest in school history at a at a primary position and just go, okay, yeah, everything's good. You're going to lead the country in power five rushing yards again. I think that to me is the question. But again, you're plugging in with guys that you've all seen perform. So you're not asking them to come from nowhere into the lineup. You're just asking to stay consistent over more snaps that you're going to get. So that's what I think the difference is for the first time under Neil. There is so many different guys that you've actually seen perform at a high level that translated into wins that are now coming back, and you're just looking for some improvement from them. You've got stabilization. Yeah. We had some, we had some destable times, unstable times, and now you've finally got a point of that you're stabilized again. That doesn't guarantee you anything when it comes to wins and losses, but it puts you in a good position to win. Yeah, it improves your chances yeah. significantly. That would be my answer. Yeah. What do you think? What do you think? Well, we know we all know football, man. We've seen enough seasons, we know. Comes down to injuries, who gets hurt, when they get hurt, at what position, comes down to mistakes and turnovers and things like that. That's what determines it. But at least You've got the opportunity. Your injuries and their injuries. Sure. That's the other oh, part. Yeah. This isn't a one-sided situation. Yeah, you're right. You stay healthy, catch a couple breaks where they have some guys that have to miss time or are <laughs> diminished a little bit. Go and get your wins. Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems. What do they do? They've got the premier lineup of business equipment that businesses in the state of West Virginia use and have for 25 years. What do you say we focus a little bit on phone systems? Business owner? Sometimes you might sit, well, it's not broke. I'm not going to fix it. Well, you know that it can become extremely efficient for you. A good phone system can help your business if you can keep your communications flowing, whether someone's in the office or not in the office. If you think it's time for a new phone system, Comax will come in and give you an absolutely free estimate, and you can take a look. Whether you want to purchase outright, lease, rent, whatever it might be, from one digital line to a thousand lines, Comax would love to talk with you. Competitively priced and ready to go. ComaxWV.com. That's ComaxWV.com. Three guys also brought to us by GoMart. We're not only uh, we're not only promoters of GoMart. GoMart. We got them rewards cards, and uh, right now the updated GoMart app. You can get on there. And they've got special perks, special perks for you if you have a rewards card. What's that mean? Access to new clubs and member-only prices. Now, you walk in there to get that fly rod size Slim Jim, right? You get that fly rod Slim Jim, and they go, well, Mr. Kerchival, we see you're a rewards card member. 
that'll be X amount off of the price. Call you by name? That's nice. Well, they would call you by name. Yeah, they'd know you. They know you. So get your rewards card and get that new app from GoMart. Check them out. Update and member-only prices. Select products. Check it out at GoMart. Let me go to my car and get some loose change so I can get a dollar back instead of more change. Right? Well, absolutely. I had a guy come up to me at the ball game the other day, who I know, and uh, he said, I just tried to buy some of the concession stand. He said, don't take cash. <laughs> that, that's a lot of places. Times are changing, days. man. Right, Senator? Times are changing. Did, did you try, try to write a check? <laughs> that's what it is. I mean, that's coming to the Coliseum, I think, next year. Or football cashless. next year. Yeah, cashless. Yeah. yeah. At one point during the baseball game, I was standing there on a concourse third baseline. We needed one guard. We needed one guard, and we could have had a starting offensive line. What do you mean? Well, we had Nick Malone. We had Wyatt Milam. We had Brandon Yates. Noted baseball player. Yeah, Wyatt Milam. He, he knew what was going on. We had Brandon Yates, and we had Johnny Williams. He could have played a tackle. All you needed was one guard, and you would have been well, set. Well, you. You, you, you could be the tight end. Who doesn't fit into that category? <laughs> yeah. So those guys were out there. Beanie was at the game. You mentioned Beanie. Mm -hmm. Beanie, was, Beanie was at the ball game. I mean, it was star-studded crew were out there. That's strong. People watching that thing, man. That, is, that ballpark changed everything. Ballpark plus Randy Mazie changed everything, didn't it? It's the classic, if you build it, they will come, and they have, when you think about it. Yeah. Yeah, really, really good. I said this during the game Saturday. Are you quoting yourself? Yeah. If you took the attendance from Saturday's game, it would probably be double the entire season's attendance cumulatively at a Hawley Field. Senator? Well, you, I mean, you couldn't uh, go to Hawley. I mean, Hawley Field was, my goodness. You had a lot. I mean, midweek game at Hawley Field, you had girlfriends and parents. That's who were there. It's, it's the thing. Now it's the cool thing. Cool thing to do. You guys ready to get healed? Yep. You sure? Yeah. There's a few of these about you today, Hoppy. Yeah, well, uh, Self-actualization plays a role in my life. Textual healing on Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by episode800.com. That's the location where you can purchase the great gear that we have assembled through the years. Whether that be ball caps, golf shirts, tuxedos. No, no tuxedos. Trousers. No. Let's go to nope. Daniel's for your tux. We don't have tux. Coffee today. from Mountaineer Roasting. We have that. Yeah, we do have that. Very popcorn. Good. We're having some hop today. Gourmet. Gourmet. Nice. Today's show. Delicious. Gourmet popcorn from Mountaineer popcorn got the mountaineer munch going on so we got a ton of stuff on there check it out at episode 800.com there's something else that's available there that uh well look, someone sent us a picture of and we'll get into that coming up you see caitlin clark on saturday night live i did I give her give her credit man that's, that's that's pretty hard to do that's that's big i mean <laughs> you, you keep wondering brad is it going to get bigger well it keeps getting bigger that's pretty hard WNBA to draft Monday night Tonight. as we record. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Texter. Tony, have you had a chance to see the new uniforms that will be unveiled during the spring game? Also, are there any stadium upgrades fans should look forward to in the fall? Uh, no. Uh, I have not seen the new uniforms. What are the changes? Do you know? In regard to what? The uniforms are changed. Yeah, this year we're wearing red and green. <laughs> really, <laughs> unconfirmed. It's uh, it really it's special. It's a good look. Is it just? It has to be like nuance changes. Yeah, really. I don't, I don't follow. All right, there's some people out there that I mean are well, uniforms is a big deal. I understand for some. Yeah, I understand that. I don't disrespect them. I'm just saying I don't, I don't personally follow it. Me, Brad. Brad's a big uniform guy. Mm -hmm. You heard anything, Senator? Nope. What there's we haven't, but I do like. Can't wait. Can't wait to see him. I was over there with the equipment guys today at practice. They had two two pieces on that I had not seen before. You know Austin, mm -hmm. Senator. Sure. Great Austin, dude. Austin, who's a, who's a man in charge of equipment over there, along with Danny Nealon and Nolan. Nolan's a great kid from Fairmont. Worked down there 
great kid, he's a young man, uh, works down there in the uh, conditioning room, and they both had pieces on that I had not seen before. What did it look like? One had a flying WV and then mountaintops hmm. underneath it. I thought that was kind of neat. And then Austin had a really like a puckered material, a gray puckered, that's kind of like little puckered on, an, on, an, on a uh, pullover. Kind of like a waffle print, you mean? A waffle print with a pullover on, and he had the state with like a star and then Morgantown there. I mm-hmm. thought that was kind of neat. Mm-hmm. I like that. So kind of interesting. Those guys come up with all the stuff. I said, who's, who's designing that stuff? You have Versace, Gucci? I mean, who's doing this? Versace's stuff? dead. Well, I mean, he's still got the company going, probably. Okay. Donatella, maybe, working on Versace. I knew Versace was dead. Poor buddy. He took it the hard way, man. He got oh. freaking assassinated. You know, Elton John wrote that song, Empty Garden, about Versace. Oh, did he? Yeah. Take a listen to it. All right. Um, texter, Tony, Neil Brown sometimes talks about you miss with a recruit. I think he missed with Brad. No catch, no completion, no punt catch, no uniform. Come on, man. So Neil offered Brad. Now this texter thinks that Brad. He missed by offering Brad? He thinks Brad didn't fulfill his scholarship. I wore the, I wore the uniform. It's fake news on that text. I wore the uniform. He says, I appreciate the coverage on the fan. The, you see that all the time, Hoppy. These guys that are going to go pro. They just say, well, I'm going to over work out separately. I'm not going to work out here. <laughs> I'm not going to work That's out. That's all I did. And again, I had counsel. C.J. Donaldson said, defer to the second half. Don't run. <laughs> he says, I appreciate the so coverage on the fantasy camp, but I'm hoping that spreads on stats could give us a little more data. Interested in knowing the average kickoff distance, average hang time on punts, average 40 times among the participants. Thank you. Kevin and Charles. Did anyone run fast in the 40? Did you remember, Brad? I just probably have to attend the fantasy camp there to find that out. See, and it was a, a major um, recruiting success by Neil Brown because he recruited Brad. Brad went, and we've talked about it and talked about it. Uh, Neil wouldn't do anything like that. Neil wouldn't. I, seemed, I think Neil just probably wanted Brad around because he's such a warm, cuddly figure. I think, I think Coach Brown's pretty savvy. Had a fun time. <laughs> Earl and Elkins. Did y'all get meals? get meals oh there was food okay but it was just it was a one day right it's not oh, it was like a day and a half you don't stay at towers or anything right? <laughs> did not okay stay at towers okay you didn't have a roommate did you there's a home game just <laughs> good night good 1981 reference did not go to, did not go go to the towers. hotel it didn't bust didn't over to the hotel, hotel either <laughs> you didn't walk over from the facilities building to towers <laughs> to get your food did not uh earl and elkins writes probably not his uh real name jeff curfew Following uh, TC, following you no. on the uh, platform formerly known as Twitter, what is now X, Y, or Z. Anyway, looks like you had an explosive weekend in your kitchen. I saw the omelet and the pizza. Anything else? And when can I come over and eat? I love the show, Earl Elkins. I saw your tweet. Yeah, that was the omelet. The omelet was really good. Like people just stop by your house, you go. That's old school. Let me fix you something. You hungry? I did it twice this weekend. Let me fix you something. I did it twice did this you? weekend. Yeah. I did it with that. I did it with Go ahead, that. Eat, eat. So those peppers, people want to know about those. So I did the pizza when I came home after the baseball game. And it was late. So I only ate I made two of those, but I only ate half of one. Not like you. And then yesterday, someone else came over and I had that done. Had a roasted chicken done. I had that had lemon <laughs> had lemon and onions in there. Roasted that in a in a cast iron skillet in the oven, hundred uh three seventy five or hundred and twenty or hour and twenty came out just succulent. Why didn't you fold the omelet over a little bit more? Uh because why'd you go open face omelet? Because I tried to and the peppers are too heavy, it was gonna lead to a tear. I said, fine, leaving it as is. No one seemed to complain. It looked good. It looked delicious. Yeah. Hey, guys, P1 Lister, but I have not texted in a while. I want to share a little story. I'm in Tampa for the winter, recently decided to try a local barbecue place that was voted Florida's best by Southern Living. Oh, it's called Big John's Alabama Barbecue. I know Tony would love it. Great meats and sides. As I look around the place, I notice several framed jersey, but the first to catch my eye was none other than West Virginia's own K.J. Harris. How about that? <laughs> There's always a West Virginia connection, right? I didn't get to talk to an owner or family member about why they had it, but being a Tampa guy, I'm guessing you may have eaten there. 
got me thinking that he'd be a good guest for the summer series. Maybe you could ask him about the connection for me. And if you come to Tampa in the winter, spring months, I'd be happy to take you for barbecue signed by Mark from Tampa via Buchanan. Yeah. KJ. How many yards did he have against East Carolina? 3,000. 300. He had 300. 300? He had three some. Yeah, three some. Yeah. I'll never forget that game. Oh. It was season opener, if I'm not mistaken. Was it? Probably. Was it season opener, Brad? I'll check. For some reason, I want to say yes, but I'm not sure. Uh, texter, MJ writes, she's in Augusta. Masters. I've worked that tournament for 20-plus years. I'm out on the course. I'm always on the lookout for a West Virginia logo to tire from the patrons. When I observe, I give a quiet shout-out, <laughs> let's go Mountaineers, which is always reciprocated. <laughs> This year, I've also been quietly singing Sweet Caroline to all the passerbys adoring the uh, adoring the flying WV. And at a 100% clip so far, it has been responded with a laugh by Eat Blank Pit. <laughs> My God, WV fans are the greatest. That's good, MJ. West Virginia opened against East Carolina 2004, won 56 to something. Yeah. K.J. Harris had 337. Yeah, so it was the opener. 337. Stephen Tennessee writes, here's my story about WVU sports and what it means to our culture. In the fall of 1984, I was 14 years old, and my grandfather asked to come by to my house to watch the Penn State game. He was a coal mine boss, usually worked Saturdays, so this was a rare treat. After the 17-14 victory, the first over the Nittany Lions since my father was three years old, my papa said, well, now I can die in peace. I laughed at the time because I didn't know he was serious. Unbeknownst to us, earlier that month, he had received a double diagnosis of stage 3 lung cancer compounded by black lung disease. The following spring, at the ripe age of 64, he passed away. Since that time, victories over PSU have been few and far between, but this fall I will have the blessing of watching the Mountaineers take on the old Goblins team with my recently born first grandson. I'll just say this. It's not just the SEC teams who can accurately say it just means more. Steve in Tennessee. Wow. Good one, Steve. Yeah. Awesome, man. Uh, Hoppy, last episode at the end, Mm -hmm. perhaps for those that turned it off before, we had a situation involving you, eggs, and a microwave oven. Yes, sir. It kind of took off on the internet, social media ed stuff so i've got a couple of responses now via text okay so that situation if you remember i said uh i was an idiot well in addition i used the term dnp egg did not play egg (laughs) and this texter says nothing else needs said mic drop moment tony can walk away from his radio and broadcasting career happy man my mother-in-law about died from a microwaved egg boil gone bad. Door flew open, knocked her down. Yep. Sound by the big guy in Mullins. Yeah. See, you were in peril's way. I was lucky. Hey, fellas, Mike from the Conley CPA Group. One of my clients now has a coffee-stained K1, thanks to me hearing DNP EGG (laughs) mid-sip, (laughs) all-timer. Oh, by the way, today's the day, isn't it? Yes. For all our CPAs out yeah. there, it's the 15th. So after midnight tonight, they can go back to putting their feet up on their desk and just chilling out. <laughs> Except for all the people who file <laughs> for an extension. That's right. Remember, an extension is not an extension to pay. That is correct. It's just an extension to file. That is correct. Uh, texter, on episode 545, you made fun of our beloved Hoppy for trying to make hard-boiled eggs in the microwave. <laughs> You can make hard-boiled eggs in a microwave. You can? But you have to use technology. Here's a new item for episode800.com. Right there, Hoppy. Craig, not Craig, from Craigsville, WVU, class of 72. So apparently they got this device where you put the egg in there and it makes them hard-boiled and you can use it. Uh, I would stops the explosion from happening. I don't know. I would just say I kind of have PTSD. Just stay I'm away. Not, yeah, I'm not sure. I want to give it nah, a second try. Stuff that. Thanks, Craig. <laughs> not your real name, I realize, but stay away. Hobby. While don't, listening don't to the episode, I should try that again. Yeah. See if it still blows up, blowed up on Maybe me. Maybe that was just one time freak accident. <laughs> I'm going to put those in there again. 
While listening to the episode most recent, I got to wondering about something from basketball season. Brad has said the national champions are usually top 25 in offense and defense. Is there anything like that that pertains to football? Hmm, good question. No, not that I've seen. Maybe you could effort on that? Yeah, we'll see. Thank you. Guess who's moving? P1 Jason in Tulsa. What now? Remember? He used to be in Dallas. Then he moved to Tulsa. He's moving out of Tulsa? Moving out of Tulsa. Here we go. Hey, guys, I want to let you know I'm entering the portal again. Next time I text, I will be P1 Jason in Phoenix. Wow. Good thing it's somehow still Big 12 territory. That got me thinking. And I realized that the Big 12 is the only conference with effectively all four time zones of the contiguous, to contiguous United States. Arizona does not do daylight savings. So half the year they're Pacific, the other half they're Mountain. You thought they struggled with the time zones for game times before? What the hell are they going to do now? They'll have to hire my old WVU calculus professor, Adam Goody Koontz, to get it right. Good guy. On the Pete Petula mention, I was in the same class as his oldest brother, Joseph, at Carmichael's area high school, home of the Mighty Mikes. Joe made the mistake of going to Penn State. I could walk to his house from mine and used to deliver the Greene County Observer reporter to his neighbor, Mr. Holmes, a house I helped build with my uncle. What a small world. I love the show. I'll see you at those games in Arizona. But wait a minute. Tucson, I think, is only mountain time. <laughs> Uh, Checking that. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of confusion coming on time zones. Yeah. I think it. I think it is. Sure. Uh, texter, Professor Vinny, I'm working out at my school gym, Saint Xavier University. That's in Illinois. And in walks a gentleman sporting a WVU shirt. Of course. A rare sight at SXU. I strike up a conversation. It turns out he's the head baseball coach at the school. His wife, ah, she's from Fairmont, mm -hmm. huge WVU fan, and he used to coach at Salem, and you guessed it, Salem, West Virginia. Mm -hmm. Always a West Virginia connection. Of course. Texter, Jim the Poet Laureate chiming in on always a West Virginia connection, even down under. I'm watching Australian football when this banner appears. Look at that. In the stands at Australian Rules Football. Oh, wow. Oh, boy, hold on side. Wayne in Clarksburg writes, from the always a West Virginia connection file, John Calipari's only returning player at Arkansas is Lawson Blake. His father was born in Huntington. Parents were from Milton. Still has relatives in state. My wife included Lawson. Got in the game for one and a half seconds when they beat Gonzaga a couple of years ago. His dad texted to say that Lawson and Jalen Williams combined to <laughs> shut down Drew Timmy. What a great opportunity that young man has to be a team leader for a senior season. Arizona is in mountain time, and most of the state does not observe daylight savings time. Mm -hmm. However, the Navajo Nation in the northeastern part of the state does observe daylight saving time. It follows mountain daylight time from March through November, and daylight savings time uh, is in effect, when daylight savings time is in effect. So... The advantage there is when Arizona comes here, they won't know what time it is. Yeah. They'll be, be so fouled up. They'll have no idea. Yeah. They might not know what day it is. Yeah. You're on that one. Philip from Philippi writes, checking in soaked in Charleston. Wanted to share a funny story while I was at a meeting for work. My team won Starbucks gift cards for doing a great job. I didn't realize I worked for Hoppy when I realized the gift card was only $5. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I can get a water. Counting down the days to August 31st, can't wait to see the world champion Mountaineers live in the stadium. Hop, you've got a heck of a rap about being the Scrooge of, uh, of gift cards and things like that. And you know what? What? It's totally merited. Yeah, probably. I mean, I would say a little bit frugal. Yeah. Don't get me started. By the way, when I gave that $10 gift certificate. Five. I thought it was five. No, it was 10. Five. It wasn't five. Yeah, back in the day. Why, you got one? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you use it? It's upstairs. <laughs> well, I haven't used it. <laughs> well, you should have used it because of inflation. <laughs> you can't get anything. Back then, you could have gotten lunch. 
Probably so not. So it's on you. Probably not. It was 10. Nah. You are. You, you got are a hold of. Um, Dave Pash? Hold of Pash. Oh, he'll tell the truth, and I don't think you want to hear the truth. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'm sorry, Brad. I was trying to do something nice for somebody who'd gone above and beyond and tried to acknowledge the work they had done. At that time, 30 years ago, a $10 gift certificate to the local eatery probably was good enough for lunch. Your tombstone should read, Here Lies Hoppy Kerchival, the human salary cap. <laughs> that's, that's what it should be. Listening to Hoppy talk about Garrett Green's completion percentage on his glorious return to three guys this week got me thinking, how rare is it for a quarterback to finish that low in the league in completion percentage but only throw four interceptions the entire year? Yeah. Love the show, Brent and Beckley. That's a good point. It also shows you to have that low completion percentage. If I, actually, I, would, I was shocked. I, I guess we knew it at the time, Brad, but – but going back, I thought, wow, only 52, 53%. But it shows you also what he did with his legs, which mm-hmm. made up for the lower completion And the big percentage. plays. I mean, remember, a lot of his yeah, hits big, were yes, downfield, yes. which are going to lead to a lower percentage. P2 Paul from Philly says, worth the wait. This is exquisite. Thank you. He got it. He got his three guys before the game, bourbon barrel. Those things are really neat. I mean, that's a that's a legitimate size bourbon barrel. I hope you can see the scale on that, and it smells really neat. You can smell it burn, man. That's a bourbon barrel, and uh, that's available at episode eight hundred dot com. Texter says, "Look what I found in the door stairs refrigerator. Yummy, Bob in Williamsburg. That's a nice discovery. He found himself one of those. Had it in the side door on his fridge in the." Uh, and uh, going down the steps there. Those are even more valuable now. How about this here? This came out this week, I guess. Untapped, you know, the app that ranks craft beers around the world? And That's user rated, right? User, you go on there and you can yeah, you rate it. User rated. This came from Untapped. And if you look at that thing closer. So the, it's the state of West Virginia. They ranked every beer in the state of West Virginia. And under the category of Pilsner other look what we have here well, the winner uh, well, well, the well. winner kerchaval so congratulations hoppy kerchaval congratulations chestnut brew works for brewing that beer that elusive beer can't find and it, it. Can't, it, won, it won a champ won a world's championship world championship won a world's championship won a world championship hop how about that mic drop beer drop boom no, no surprise no surprise Gentlemen, this is what fit- it done. <laughs> Gentlemen, this is Fitty from Fairmont. Now I live in upstate New York. One and done. Like the Chicago Bears of beer. World title. I've been efforting a lot lately and it's paid off. First, this past week, my efforting shirt from episode eight hundred landed on my doorsteps. This is some high quality threads there. Secondly, tell Charles to be on the lookout for the flying W V in the crowd at his April 20th concert in Albany. I scored two incredibly hard to get tickets to support our boy. So Charles Wesley Godwin this weekend began his tour with Luke Bryan. Stadium tour. Stadium. Yeah. Stadium? Yes, yeah, so that's what I'm going to say. First time ever in a stadium. He did they did Minnesota um this weekend. We got to get him when it when his tour's over, we got to get him in and tell yeah. some tour stories. I tell you what, if you go look up look at his tour coming up here, he ain't He's on the road, yeah, dude. He goes. He goes now. He goes. I mean, th- basically, here's the deal, dude. You and he have absolutely nothing in common. Why would you say that? Because he goes to work for long periods of time. And he does not, like, he doesn't go, like, he's not going to come up. Brad, I mean, you're right, right? He's not going to tell Luke Bryan here, hey, Luke, I'm going to take the next couple of weeks off, may be around, may not be around. By the way, move your computer in farther. You're making me crazy with the – I don't like that yeah, angle. Yeah, I, I agree. That's move about the to fall. Compu- Can move, you move your computer you that move your way. notepad. No, and, don't do no, that. It's no. going to fall over. D- Go ahead. Yeah, don't be, jack around. Don't, <laughs> now, don't jack around because you're not going to have the reflexes to get it. So just be, move the just notepad. Just be dumb. Just move your computer over, <laughs> Johnny. Right. Like a kindergartner over there stepping on a – Anyway, so no, he works, Hoppy. He comes to work all the time. I don't know if we'd be able to get him. Jeez. Oh, In your defense, he's not of your age. Thank you. 
I mean, I, he's got years to work. I'm not. You've going put a to, lot of your work in. I am not. Don't going take to, that from him. I'm not. I'm going forward. I'm not going to honor that anymore. I'm not going to honor those comments anymore <laughs> with a rebuttal. <laughs> you don't need to. By the way, Charles is going to come I, through. You do I, you. I, I spent I spent a lot of years. No, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> by the way, uh, Charles is coming by here tomorrow morning. He is. <laughs> He is. <laughs> oh, I thought he's so busy. He, he can't is. come by. He literally is going to be home for a day, and then they're going back is out. Is he coming on... in here? Yeah, he's got to autograph two guitars for us. Oh, okay. We're going to auction off to raise money. I'd like to talk to him if I have time. Yeah, I think he's busy. <laughs> if I'm here tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm not going to be here. All right. <laughs> Last thing, uh, this guy says, I may have figured out why Hoppy's only around part of the time. I was at my financial advisor the other day discussing once I hit retirement, what do I do? What do I want to do? I mentioned the fact that I still may want to work a little something. Over the next 20 minutes, she goes into all the Social Security benefits impacted by working over the age of retirement. Being careful not to earn too much as it can reduce your benefits. She went into a few examples of past clients having to quit jobs, not show up for work during the year due to bad planning around these limitations. I'm starting to wonder about all how these assignments he said he's always on. So maybe, yeah, you're playing the game. No, I'm only kidding. Hoppy is one of the hardest working reporters out there, except for that Pete guy. <laughs> yeah. I tell you what, Sam will must work all the time. Well, yeah, he does. Yeah, he does. But he's not. When he's your age, he's not going to be doing it. He will have his feet up by the time he's your age. But I was. I mean, you you're know, a man of it age. was. It was. It was Friday. I was on one of my mini vacations, M A N Y, not M I N I. Mini vacations on a Friday. Did you call me? You called me about a potential story. Yeah. Did I start to? And I did. I start to work. I didn't get this. Did I start to work on it? No, we took care of it internally. <laughs> We got it without you. Thank you. Actually, you did. I should, probably a bad example on my part. Yeah. Dear three guys, assuming the dean isn't out sick on another vacation, preparing work on a Pulitzer Prize quality project, or taking a shift at the fire department, <laughs> I've listened to every episode since the start from my home here in Michigan, but I've never written in. I felt now was the time as I wanted to give a huge shout out to your guy, Dave, for once again coming through in the clutch as the guy that greases the gears. I finally got around to ordering my first set of three guys gear and game day grind. I love the shirts, but was anxious when my caffeine fix didn't show. One email to check in and Dave hashtag efforted to solve the problem in no time. Save the day mm -hmm. so that I can enjoy the coffee this weekend and wear the gear while going to see your boy, Charles Wesley Godwin in Grand Rapids tomorrow evening. There it is. Got a little French press out there. And look, Dave sent him a card. It said, thanks for patience. Isn't that nice? Dave's elite, on it. Elite customer service. Very, You've heard this a million yes. times already, but I'll make it one million and one by saying that what you guys do in bringing a small piece of West Virginia and WVU to those of us out of state on a weekly basis is like a lifeline home. Keep up the great work. I'll keep listening all the way to episode 799 as 800 is clearly unattainable. Clearly. Montani Semper Libri. Signed by Chris Casto from outside Kalamazoo by way of the Mothman's hometown and current landowner in Tucker and Raleigh counties. Randolph. Tucker and Randolph. Randolph counties. Yeah. Thank you, Chris. Boy, you're right. Um, Charles Wesley Godwin's going to be busy here. <laughs> you better grab him in that hallway tomorrow morning. He's just going to come I mean, in with a my Sharpie. My goodness. He's going to be here for about five minutes with that Sharpie. Detroit, Toronto, New York. Got New Buffalo York. coming. Got Buffalo coming. California, Tucson. I wonder what time it'll be. That show will be. When he makes Tucson. that turn, when he makes that turn out of the eastern portion, he goes to California, yeah. he's out there a good bit. That's You know, that's, I know we say, okay, you're playing music, you love to play music. We got to talk to him about that. That's hard. That is a hard life. He works, he physically works out hard. He runs a lot. Because you imagine the effort he puts forth when he's on that stage. I mean, he goes hard. Hard, hard. I mean, he like he doesn't. He ain't sitting up there it, on a it, stool. It, it, look at this. Shows May, uh, April seventeenth, eighteenth, nineteenth, twenty four, twenty five, twenty six, twenty eight, May three, May four, May five. I mean, oh yeah, that's what I said. I looked it out. It's one of the all time great stories. It's one of the all time great stories. Will you make sure you bring him by tomorrow? I'm not going to be here. 
Senator and I are on assignment tomorrow morning. Excuse me? We're on assignment working for the Mountaineer golf team. All right. We're the starters at the Mountaineer Invitational. Are you well, really? you are. I'm just there to support. No, nah, I think we've got a situation. I think you're going to have to do the 10th hole. Really? You're the starter? Yes. You know, that, that's, you know what you're doing? Absolutely zero idea. That's, that's a thing. You've got to know what you're doing. If they give me a list with some names on it, I'll be fine. Oh, you're going to say the name like? I got an idea. <clears throat> Please give an almost heaven welcome to Baylor University's Hoppy Kerchival. What do you think? Yeah, that's fine. I'm going to ask Kovic, too. He'll help me. Only Brad? I think, but that's, a, that's concerning. I'm, what do you mean I'm doing something? Yeah, we, we need to. Help. Are you doing a shotgun? Has he got to do? The- no, shotguns today. They get, literally get the Mountaineer. He blasts, he blasts oh. the rifle. But and that Brad's starts- got to do the back nine? Yeah. He First, can, I've heard of that. He can either. I was going to ask <laughs> you, you about know. that. He was going to ask you about. I was going to ask you about that. You can either have hole one or hole ask ten. Me about that when when we pull up to the golf club. I always I was feel. Just going along to a fun day I, at the golf course. Say hi to everybody. Hey, good to see you. I always feel. You know, on time I got to announce. Yeah, that'd be awesome. It'll be yeah. a great now, representative for three well, guys. Tony see. is just like, oh, yeah. blah, blah. Brad's going to yeah. be all tight. <laughs> going to be tonight. As soon as he gets like tonight, he's going to be going over names tonight. Like now, I'm done with text. I'm out. <laughs> Please give an almost heaven welcome. I can watch the Masters from the weekend. <laughs> when paying attention it. to the starter when I had it on. I know I had to start. Typical I am. Classic. Oh, oh, oh by the way. We'll yeah. have fun. Hey, three guys, I finally had a chance to listen to the Jaquay Hubbard interview. Wow. <laughs> he is a very impressive young man. One skill he had, you don't see it in a lot of speakers, especially at his age, is how he would acknowledge, support your questions. For example, a couple of questions he responded with, that's a great question. It's a simple yet powerful presentation skill technique. Kudos to Jaquay and for the development opportunities that WVU is providing. Yeah, he's terrific. Texter got to see the world champion Mountaineers today. Great day for baseball, getting the next generation ready. Look at this little guy. So that little guy was going to the ball game. That was in the morning. <laughs> ready. <laughs> he didn't look like he was completely thrilled in the morning, but in the afternoon, he's there. he was having himself a big time, had his glove on. He was ready. Anything coming over there was going to get it. That's awesome. Congratulations to you there. Hope you had fun. I hope you wore sunscreen. It was sunny. It was. Texter. Hey, guys, I've got a coach's question session today. Would you walk me through the hiring process for a new coach? Is he contacted personally by the athletic director, or does everything go through an agent, including terms and pay, et cetera? Did Coach DeVries visit Morgantown before signing? Also, I noted the Marshall men's coach only received $350,000 per year on his contract. That seems awfully low for a D1 coach. Was that an error printed in the release? Continuing with the coaching theme, I would like to ask about Coach Nikki and the women's soccer team. I haven't heard much lately. Is she a victim of NIL or just a run of bad luck? My final question involves Coach Huggins. Is he deemed toxic for the right fit? has not been found, or is it a money issue? I realize you don't have all the details, but you are close to the source. I had the impression he's still wanting to coach. Perhaps that's an issue, Mike and Wheeling. A lot of questions. Okay, uh, would you walk me through that? Is he contacted personally by the AD, or does everything go through an agent? Almost everything goes through an agent when you're talking about a head coach of a major sport, including the terms. It all goes through the intermediary, which would be the agent. Did Coach DeVries visit Morgantown before signing? No. I noted Marshall's coach only received $350,000 per year. I think that is correct, and basically it's what can a school afford. You know, different levels, different income budgets and things like that. Um, you know, Nikki, is, Nikki is alive and well <laughs> and fine. I think the league overall has gotten better. Uh, the Big 12 has, has been much improved, and they're going to be right in there again swinging, but no. Um, and is Coach Huggins de- deemed toxic or the right fit? Uh, I've got zero idea at this point. I mean, you saw the job openings that opened this year. Um, you saw the folks that filled those openings. Uh, I, I really have no feel um, whatsoever on exactly, you know, what, what is going on in regard to, to that. Um, hello, gentlemen. Logan from Greenbrier County. I hope all is going well, especially after Hoppy had that experience with those eggs. 
I've got a question request. My dad's birthday is Saturday, turning the big seven zero. I'm wondering if you guys could wish him an early happy birthday. He's a lifelong Mountaineer fan, was a student manager under Bobby Bowden in the 70s. Right. Nice. The picture above right there, that's from us at the BYU game back in November. I appreciate all the work you three guys do. Sincerely, Logan. He looks great for 70. Sure he does. Looks a hell of a lot better than you, Hoppy. Yeah, he does. Um, So congratulations uh, to Logan's dad. Hope you have a wonderful birthday. Happy birthday. And I hope you're working just as hard now as you did when you were 30 years old. <laughs> it seems as though we may have it seems as though we may have touched a nerve. Just what whatever. are you shaking your head about, dog? Nothing. Nothing. I want to show you some pictures. Poppy. Can I, can, I show I'm you some probably, pictures? I'm probably a little sensitive to it because I don't work as hard as I once did. So I'm probably a little sensitive to the issue. So But someone that's self-actualized, that shouldn't bother him. You're, that that's also correct. So I'm not actually totally self-actualized. It's just you're, an ongoing effort. You're self-actualized when it's convenient. <laughs> yes. You're efforting. You're efforting I'm the effort- self-actualization. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Can I show you some pictures of what inside Lou Wendell Marine? Please take a look at a few of these photos. And these folks here. I mean, oh, we're inside the showroom. Oh, nice. Oh my yeah. gosh! Look at those. Hey, those are absolutely. Gorgeous with a capital G. Rotate if you would through there, Austin. I've been talking about supply. I've been talking about all the stuff that they have, all the accessories that they have. And uh, so that if you go into Lou Wendell and you take, now see what I'm saying now? They got little tires for trailers. They got big tires for trailers. They got all kinds of tires. Fish finder. They got fish <laughs> finders. They got like every apparati. They got life vests. Seat cushion. They got a whole <laughs> deal. They got an anchor holder. Floats, they got oil. Tubes. Look at those tubes. They got a nice selection of tubes. You drag them people around on there in the back of that boat, give them a time of their life. Buoys. Rope for the rope. tube. <laughs> you got any kind of rope that you want. So, all kidding aside, and there we oh, go. There we go. They're in. There we go. They're in. Oh. They're in. Those were vacated when we talked with the folks there, but they have put the pontoons into the slips. There we go, Hop. And they've got that. So if you go to Lou Wendell Marine Sales' website, that's LouWendellMarineSales.com, they've got a live camera. You can take a look at the weather, and you can see the boats in there. But here's the deal. When it comes to pontoon boats, Lou Wendell is the premier sales outlet in our state. And so if you're thinking of tuning, pontooning, try tuning, I don't care. Tune in a fish. It's got to be Lou Wendell Marine Sales. They've got a three guys special going on right now. Check them out on the website, or you can visit them in St. Albans, where they've been doing business. We're working on. We're working. We're closer to a half of a century than anything else right now. So Lou Wendell Marine Sales is the place. Selection hasn't been better and won't be better because as soon as people start taking, you know, it takes taking six months. Ones, six takes know. six months to build one of those, one of those vessels. I'm in know? Michigan. You're probably going to be getting out on yours pretty soon, right? Soon. Yeah. You have a – yeah, that'd be nice. Out on cheat? Yeah. Yeah. Be good. You get you got a big boat on the – you got a big tube on the back? You get those kids going back there? Yeah, oh yeah, we do that. You good about it? Yeah. You able to turn so the thing goes like mm-hmm. – You do that? Yeah. That's kind of neat. Yeah. You think you could take me and Hoppy out sometime? Sure. That'd be kind of neat, wouldn't it, Hop? I'm not going. <laughs> Why? Because I'm mad at you. <laughs> Why do you care what he says? Why are you mad at me? I'm just bringing up what the listeners are writing. I didn't bring anything up. Why do you care what he says to you about Why that? Why is he I didn't say it. The people wrote it. What do you care if he thinks you show up for work or not? I might not be available. Plus, I wasn't invited to your sandwich ordeal a week ago. You were deathly sick. It would have been nice to be invited, Brad. Well, I would have invited you if the well, previous right. two he's, days. He's, you, pre- you were right earlier. He's right on that the one. The previous two days when I talked to you, you wouldn't sound like this. Yeah, it was bad. It's been I was bad. sick. Yeah. I haven't we been didn't need this you showing sick. up infecting did everybody you or, in the house. So. Did you or did you not say, I have not been this sick in a long time? I did. I had that conversation with you three days before the event. The hell if I'm bringing you to my house. <laughs> still a little bit sick. Better come in with a little bit. Mr. Virus over there. 
Three Guys Before the Game is brought to us by Comax Business Systems, keeping West Virginia's business data safe, secure, and efficient for 25 years. By GoMart, get the updated rewards by getting that updated app. Check it out. GoMart.com. By Lou Wendell Marine Sales in St. Albans. They sell family fun. You saw inside. Check them out at LouWendellMarineSales.com. Coming up on Thursday, guest in the studio. Who we got? Mark Kellogg, WV women's basketball coach. We're going to do a um, a postseason, uh, what do you say when you, you debrief? We're going to debrief. They That's what we're doing. Heck of a year. We're debriefing, and he's building that roster again. Building that roster up. Yeah. Sorry, you, you turned your mic off. What's that? Turn me off. That'll be fun to talk to. Yeah, yeah I'm looking forward to it. Plus, we got a few other things coming up in the next few weeks. Should be pretty good, Clark. All right, we're out. Our producer, Austin Wright. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do that for the audio version or the video version on the YouTubes. You can watch us on Metro News TV, Armed Forces Radio, no. QVC. No. no, none of that. HVAC. No. no. Whatever you need it on, no. we're there. Get hot. Here we go. We're going to try to keep Hoppy on the program with us. Apparently, we've got some, some relationship <laughs> Talk fixing to do. Talk to my today. agent. See you.